Hello everyone, it's Mark Leibovit and this is the Leibovit VR Gold Letter Update video update for Friday, October 17th and uh, let's get to it. Looking at uh, UUP first, which is the uh, PowerShares dollar index, uh, mirroring the US dollar index and this is a weekly chart that we had a Leibovit negative VR the previous week, we continued down last week, whether this is a major top or a little, little top, I don't know, but it's certainly a positive sign for the metals since uh, the street strongly believes that uh, the metals should trade inversely to the uh, currency. And of course, this is the case worldwide. If you own gold in uh, yen or in uh, euros, you're doing okay. Uh, dollar strength obviously has been a problem, though ultimately I feel that the gold could rally despite strength in the U.S. dollar, but at least this is a sign that perhaps something has changed here. So uh, let's take a look at it. Let's look at uh, FNV, which is Franco Nevada Corp. Uh, this company doesn't actually uh, mine. They provide funding, as you know, for other companies. But terrific relative strength here, considering what's going on in the uh, gold market. It's been in an uptrend uh, for almost a year, zigzagging its way higher. And we had some positive volume here. It's trading above the 50-week moving average, which is the blue line and, of course, the 200-week moving average and stochastic is going higher. So that's, that's a bit of a decent sign. Uh, looking at um, GOLD, which is Rand Gold, this is sort of the blue chip uh, gold stock out there. Uh, slightly rising stochastic here on the weekly, struggling to move higher but still positive volume. You've got a 50-week moving average in the mid-70s and a 200-week in the 80s. So if you start crossing above those levels, that would be a very good sign. Looking at GLD, which of course is the uh, gold trust on the weekly chart, it's starting to trend higher. Uh, we have an upward stochastic. Of course, we have resistance here at the 50-week uh, moving average. That's 123 in GLD. So uh, you got to figure it's about the mid uh, 1240s for spot gold. In any event, uh, strength above that level and particularly above the 200 uh, week moving average, which is uh, 130 in GLD, and that would be a little over 1300 for spot gold. That would be a strong sign that a bigger turn has occurred. But for now, it looks like it's struggling, but uh, coming off a of bottom, and that's important. SLV, not doing as well. This is your silver trust inching higher, but we're not seeing to be getting the uh, strong volume we'd like to see in any event. Uh, uh, silver is important because it topped out in May 2011, several months before gold. So it would be great if we could see uh, silver come back to life here. That's been a big, big, uh, big important problem for the uh, metals market, not seeing the uh, silver market really uh, take off. Of course, we know there's a lot of manipulation going on, but that's a whole other story. Speaking of silver, this is First Majestic, which is probably the uh, little blue chip in the um, silver area. I read recently, uh, you might have read it in my Gold News Raw update that uh, First Majestic was starting to withhold uh, silver production, I guess objecting to the fact that the market's being manipulated and silver's being driven lower. Meanwhile, stochastic's starting to rise here a little bit. It's well below its 50-week moving average, very cheap historically, so uh, there is a play here, though I like to see some you know, upside volume come in. Let's look at Central Fund of Canada, CEF. On the weekly chart, some volume coming into the upside here. You know, very cheap relative to where it's been. As you know, this is about 55% gold, 45% silver, rising stochastic. And finally, we're going to look at GGN, which is the Gabelli uh, Global Natural Resource Trust. This pays around a 10% dividend, assuming that dividend holds, uh, showing a little life here. It looks like it uh, could trade higher toward the $10 area, just based on the um, theory that it moves toward the, uh, the mean, which in this case I believe is the 50-week moving average. So a little bit of a life here, and uh, this is, I think, you know, a good longer-term play anyway because of the uh, dividend. And that's pretty much it. Just uh, bringing you up to speed here a bit. Thanks for checking in this weekend, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video and written updates.